西要过来了，美酒才能进再打。Oh, oh, you're the guest. You want to be first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So any good recipe needs the right ingredients. So now I've got two buckets of fermented wine. We're in Hongyang village, and I'm going to be shown the Miao way to make rice wine. So I'm very excited. These things are very, very heavy. Let's hope I get to the stove very quickly. So I'm here with Jiang Xiaoxia, and she's going to show me how to make fermented wine. We've got our materials ready. They've been making wine like this for generations in this village. So where do we begin? Okay, let's start. 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 闻到酒香了没？嗯、yeah, ，it smells, it smells really good. 啊，慢点啊，要放平它啊，放上去。So now the process is nearly complete. We just need to wait now. This is filled with cold water. That's so that when the steam hits the cold pan here, it creates more condensation and the wine vapors get captured. And that's what we're going to distill. We're doing this to seal it up. We've got to seal everything, so we're sealing this with rice. Uh -huh. Oh, what's in? Oh, what's in? Oh, what's in? Oh, fresh wine. Wow. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It smells good. Yeah, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, it smells very strong. Oh, yeah. This will keep you very, very warm. Oh, I can feel it here. It's just, it warms me up. Oh my word. It is arts and crafts time here at the workshop of silversmith Wu Shui Gan, who is a national level inheritor of this incredible cultural art form of the Miao people. I'm going to see what I can learn from him today. This is Tai Mei La. This is our local landlord. Yao Mao. Yao Mao. Two years. Oh wow. These are the same as people. Sheep, goats, cows, pigeons. 小鸟啊，还有蝴蝶啊，很多很多，这是一个大凤凰，是代表百鸟朝凤。上一个部件来都是有大概一万多个。我可以做一点，可以吗？啊，可以。OK。都是有一条银丝啊，把它剪开出去，都是里面的，就是一条鱼。这个是用银丝慢慢的编出来。四条银丝，自己就爱好，不干一切，故意不怕疲劳。有兴趣的就是不像谁要想要完成，要有耐心，要坚持。一个人有有几个星期完成？有创意，能够你搞到的出来的东西，能得到更多人喜欢的东西，才是满分。因为我做个手艺，它是祖传的。它有个老规矩，藏内不藏外，藏男不藏女。现在我藏给我女儿、我儿子他们，也带了十多个徒弟
我呢希望我把我们这个生意把它产生下去。What do you feel as a woman you're bringing to the art form? Maybe wasn't there previously. Like we, young people, they may not like this big space. We must make it innovative. For example, like this wig, it's been innovative. But in our innovative process, we keep our traditional hand craft. Like this kind of hand craft is like a flower work. You see, this kind of we make it small. It's very suitable for young girls. We make a little flower. 就是圆圆的，圆圆满满的意思，团圆的意思。像这些就是很传统，特别重。你看一下，特别沉，对不对？威力特别重。然后我们结婚的时候要带酒队。哇，我我结、so、我结婚的时候，爸爸就送了我酒队了。嗯、uh, ，爸爸妈妈的爱就就他都在这个仪式里面了。嗯，就是他给你的东西越多，就代表他越爱你。The legend and love of Mother Butterfly is preserved in Miao song and embroidery, and inspired fashion designer Zhao Huidou, who features the motif in one of her recent collections on the Milan runway. Zhao 老师，您好，您把贵州苗绣带到米兰时装周，您是如何把传统元素和现在时尚结合在一起的？时尚它就是需要有文化的印记的，一定是有它的文化的内核。苗族的文化是非常能够打动我的，因为苗族它曾经是叫穿到身上的史书。作为我们是设计师，我们既要去理解过去，同时呢回到当下去考虑当下到未来的这样一个呈现形式。所以我们就用了这样一个苗印的主题，去让更多人知道苗族的故事，但是又是当时代的时尚语言。我个人呢也特别喜欢贵州，贵州的少数民族文化保护是做的最好的。每一次我带着设计师下乡啊，来这里能够亲身的直面去感受，是对我的创作跟创意是有非常大的影响。以前呢，大家觉得中国人没有时尚，只有欧洲、美国或者是发达的国家。那么，实际上当时代的中国现在已经是一个对于时尚生活有天翻地覆的一个变化，逐步逐步在开始民族文化的自信的过程中，大家对于中国品牌的崛起背后的中国的文化故事，大家是非常的感兴趣的。时尚是无国界的，我们希望通过我们很多的一个设计语言，包括服装的这样一个呈现的形态，让更多人去了解中国。这也是我们为什么不断的在米兰双周发生的原因。这次我们到米兰双周，我们带过去绣娘石川英，我特别推荐大家能够去到她的工作室去看一看。好的，我去现场体验体验。这是我们的破线绣，这个绣法是非常精致，一根线破八到十二个来绣的。什么产品在国外最受到客户的欢迎？一个包包加一小朵花。一个笔记本加一小朵花，一铺裙子加一条花，它、嗯、也受到国外、国内的游客喜欢、嗯。他们喜欢的就是用我们的传统图案跟现代元素融合。嗯、国潮就是中国时尚最大、最重要的趋势，对民族文化或者民族文化的推广有什么作用？哦，有很大的作用，因为我们传统的也是时尚的，民族的也是世界的。我们去参加米兰十三周之前两个月，赶制我们的刺绣加班加点，甚至最后那一个星期，绣娘们都通宵的加班。当时看见我自己亲手绣的，还有亲手设计的图案，放在他们米兰那边的十三周的模特身上，我
感到非常非常的高兴，非常非常的自豪啊，而且又激动，因为我们的文化啊，能够推向全世界，能够到国际展示，是一件很大的事情。我们就是两个代表，中国贵州两个秀娘现场刺绣给所有的。观众现场秀成一小朵给他们看，贵州秀娘不得了，一直给给我们点赞。当然，一直给我们点赞。Well, what a wonderful day! What's your opinion of this place? What's your experience been like? I usually look more at urban fashions, but the beauty about this day was that I got to explore some ethnic group fashion in Guizhou. Now, make no mistake, Guizhou is home to more than. One ethnic group. I had the opportunity to delve into the exuberant world of Miao embroidery, which is typically executed by the Miao women. They start doing embroidery from the age of six, seven, eight, something like that.、Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful way showing that fashion is more than just a superficial thing. You always have to scratch the surface. The embroidery of the Miao tells. Their histories, the history of this ethnic group, they're really going all out to preserve and carry on this heritage, even by taking it to the international stage. For example, that of Milan Fashion Week. Oh la la! And that's interesting on another level because then you are connecting minority heritage with foreign audiences. It's really about fashion becoming this whole person-to-person, culture-to-culture communication. Yeah. Channel. I mean, that's exactly what UNESCO say about cultural diversity and creativity. They say cultural diversity and creativity are natural drivers for innovation. So you've got people like performers, artists, creators. They challenge your perspective on the world, and that can help you rethink the environment. And I think we definitely see that from the people here making things in Guizhou.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I love that because the more you see and experience different. Cultures and even you know the different ethnic cultures within a larger group, like we're seeing here with the Miao, it becomes this innovative melting pot. Like in Mexico, they do a lot of silver work. Of course, I got some beautiful silver on. Thank you, Mister Wu. Legit, legit, Guizhou. I know, so beautiful. So beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous.、Yeah. And beautiful so, also. <laughs> And to see, you know, this craftsman handing down this art form to his daughter, which is very uncommon.、Yeah. Like you said, the women do the embroidery, the men traditionally do the silversmith,、exactly. and now we have a woman as a master silversmith. You know, starting her online store, and that will reach more people, you know, across the world. And who knows who will be inspired by what and what form it'll take. You know, what iteration it will take down the line. And that e-commerce is, you know, necessary for a place like this because the terrain is is, is quite a challenge, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It took what a couple hours from the airport Wait, to get to here. Yeah, and capital. Such a testament to the government for creating this infrastructure, because otherwise, these cultures and master craftsmen would just be little hidden gems in、yeah. isolated villages. You would never find them. You say that about people coming in, and when you think about that, Guizhou has 40 of the world's 100 tallest bridges. So even before the local government could think about tourism. They first had to think about infrastructure, and that in itself is such a, an incredible feat of engineering. That's why we, we're here, and that's why we can enjoy all of this. There's a Chinese saying about Guizhou. It is, 地无三尺平 Well, basically, it comes down to Guizhou being the only region in China with no plains. Wow. As in flat spaces. That's incredible, and you know you can see that you know this is exactly what the <laughs> terrain has、yeah. been like. One more beautiful thing is that this expansion of craft allows locals to up their livelihoods. Sure. So it's、yeah. fashion as a really a driving force. Indeed. Yeah. In, in the economy here, in helping you know the people lift themselves out of absolute poverty in、uh, late 2020. 2020. Yes.、Yeah. Well, we've had、uh, a wonderful time. How about we try and enjoy the culture a little bit more? Earlier today, I made my own rice wine. Would you like to try some to toast the episode? A hundred percent. This is the first time making this. Thank you, Elspeth, for joining us again. And we'll say to everybody else, welcome to Guizhou. Welcome. Gambe. <laughs>